Welcome back to the channel my friends. Today is the day. It's Monday so it's called Demon's Day. It will be quite a long episode and I will show you how to paint camo with a brush and how to make some basic painting on the details. In the end some small work with decals. Let's roll. We start the next episode and immediately some failure. Luckily I found this part. This time the carpet monster will stay hungry. Defenders and exhaust elements were attached with a blue tack, so detaching them wasn't a problem. The trucks together with the wheels were also easy to remove and for now they are left aside to make a separate episode of How to Paint series. Ok guys, it's time to like and subscribe. Just click that red button. Click. Before I start painting I always clean the whole model well from dust and other dirt that had accumulated on the model during construction stage. Of course I will use the proven model degreaser for this. As I have mentioned many times, its great advantage is that it dries very quickly, to be accurate in several seconds, so painting can be done immediately after cleaning. Suitable for any surface and any material, plastic, metal, wood and resin. On this model I decided to use a red acrylic undercoat. Let's say it will be a standard red primer color used by Germans during the war. Quick airbrush painting on the low parts of the model didn't take much time. Of course if we dilute the paint properly and there is no clogging of the nozzle. As for the upper surfaces, first of all I covered the metal elements with metal primer to ensure better paint adhesion. It's worth doing this especially on tow cables and nets on the engine plate. On these elements there are always some problems with paint adhesion. Yes, I know that I didn't completely cover the model with a primer. Let's say, no risk, no fun. But here I don't risk too much because I'm sure that after cleaning the model with model degreaser, the paint will stick to the surface nicely. So I start painting with a sand shade. I put on really thin layers and try to rotate the model so that the paint stream can reach all nooks and crannies. On the turret right here you can clearly see how thin the layers are and how quickly they dry. It was quick. And now after the first painting session we have two colors in the model. Of course this bottom will be almost invisible due to the mud that will undoubtedly appear in the weathering. Now the most important stage, painting the actual camo blocks. 
In the case of the pattern that I want to have on my model it was regular and repetitive because it was created in the factory and specific plans were used for this. I printed the drawing on the vehicle to have a pattern to copy onto my model but my printer rebelled a bit so I have to do some work with a pencil. And now I'm copying the pattern of individual spots onto the model. Such pencil drawing has many advantages. First, it's easier to paint on the marked lines later. Second, two layers of color cover each line without any problems so you don't have to worry about anything that will be visible later. Third, if you make a mistake it's easy to wipe it with an eraser and draw it again. That's it. First I'm going to paint the green spots. Medium leaf is fine for this. Of course you can look for even better matching colors but I plan to add a winter camo to the model so I want the colors to be at the right level. I'm aware that this color doesn't correspond in 100% to the original and the purist may accuse me of being inaccurate but I have already said that I followed the beaten track and last time I used this shade on King Tiger and the effect was great. The painting is in progress so it's good time to say thank you to my patrons. They make great support for me and I try to do my best reporting on other projects that I work on in parallel and which I show in public only for my patrons. If you want to see more materials not published anywhere else, photos from the workshop, galleries or you would like to see the next video now, then check out my website and see what appears there. I try to publish posts as often as possible so that the patrons are up to date with progress on my models. Of course we are constantly in touch with comments and private messages and because of that Patreon is the first place I check every day. So check it for free and join our group. It must be assumed in advance that we will paint two layers so if the first one doesn't look perfect there is nothing to worry about. The second layer will surely make the color even and properly saturated. Note that the brush is not heavily saturated with paint during the second application. The most important thing is to even out the surface with color. Of course you can use the accelerator. 
I use acrylic doctor thinner for the paint, it has very good properties and it's suitable for all acrylic paints. I did exactly the same with the brown shade as with the green one. Contrary to appearances, this type of painting isn't particularly demanding. If I had to mask all shapes of camo blocks, it would take me more time than painting. I'm almost sure of it. Besides, having glued elements on the hull, here I mean tools and ropes, painting sharp edges with an airbrush is pure madness. Also, if you are wondering if I did the right thing, believe me, I did. I think the hand camo painting issue is completely cleared up at the moment. This is nothing new for advanced modelers, but I think beginners will have material to analyze and test on their models. I'm starting the stage of painting additional elements on the model. The first will be the colored spur track links, which are mounted on the turret. A mixture of these two colors was applied to all surfaces. They came out very dark, you can even say almost black, but that's how I wanted them to look like.
after one of the previous episodes regarding the painting of additional tracks, you can find the link above and in the description of this film, one of the viewers pointed out to me the realism and more specifically the fact that the spare tracks didn't rust in this way. The ones mounted on wheels as well. I have no reason not to believe what I received in the message but maybe someone who is in the subject can confirm it. Let me know in the comment. He wrote to me that from the late 30s they all contained manganese for wheel resistance, although in reducing quantities in German trucks as the war progressed. Manganese is naturally corrosion inhabiting, so truck links actually didn't weather in the way we paint them on our models nowadays. They would generally oxidize to a milky coffee or milk chocolate shade darkening to a dark chocolate shade over time. Spare links were frequently painted black. Well, with that in mind, I decided to paint the tracks a little different than usual. Small amounts of weathering paints will form the basis of this paint job. Of course, I remember all the time that there will also be white camo on these spare tracks here and there, so some effects will be obscured or their visibility will be greatly reduced. A bit of dark rust will also be there, but I paint it more by mixing with dark sand than by making pure rust. And this is the final result. The paint I used as the color of the spare trucks I sprayed to make a primer on the jack and an additional fire extinguisher and to make a shadow around the turret ring and on the lower surfaces of the turret. I installed the antenna rod in the socket and painted it with dark grey or black, I don't remember. And can't recognize it in this video. It doesn't matter. I put easy medium on the jack to make some scratches. A bit of water and the effect is very, very realistic. I like it a lot. You have the second chance to make something good for our planet. Like and subscribe. I plan to put two empty shells on the engine plate. I found them in my additional parts and I can see that they have some old paint on the surface. Therefore I quickly replenish the color. The brush is soaked with paint to a minimum extent and you can see exactly how the painting is going. I didn't want to prepare the airbrush for two pieces. So this is why I did it with brush. Now the exhausts. The choice of colors is completely subjective and everyone can complete such a set. Five colors for base paint and weathering will do the job in a moment. A little speckling, a little filter and more speckling and even more speckling. 
and as a result it's a pretty good base for wash and subsequent filters and further weathering. It's enough for the moment. Nice. First I painted the machine gun barrel, of course there will be some more effects on it, so don't worry about its color right now. Painting the towing cables is a bit more time consuming work, because they are already glued to the model and you have to manipulate a bit to get to all nooks and crannies. I painted the large ropes in a pure color and for a little one I mixed gun metal with dark grey. The rope ends have a slightly different shade because I painted them dark yellow. The same colors will be used to paint the tools, more specifically their metal parts. As I said, I use the same colors to paint all the tools, and of course they will be weathered later. All the wooden elements were painted with light shades and some filters were added, just to make them look different. Is there a need to say that they will be weathered? I don't think so. But they will. <laughs> On these parts I spread a very diluted bronze, several layers, dried with an accelerator, darkened the individual parts according accordingly. Darkened the darkened the individual parts accordingly. Yeah, finally. All the hit marks were painted dark grey and silver. Also the blanket on which the loader is sitting got a little bit of color. The spare trucks were put in their places and glued to the hangers.
I also attached the wire cutter in an unusual location. Do you remember the part that disappeared at the very beginning? I glued it and no, I found it and glued in place. And then I do the same with the towing cable. Ok, to finish the camo painting I have to add some more dots which are quite characteristic of this pattern. I had doubts of what colors should be painted. I talked about this with specialist Mirko Bayer and he told me that green dots should be on yellow and yellow dots should be on green and brown. Following his research he states that the brown ones are unlikely to be seen on the available materials. Today's struggle with matter is almost over, there were decals left. From my collection I took one set to complete the two numbers for the size of the dart. In addition the letter G on the front which is not fully known what it means and two stickers on the fire extinguishers. I did a little trick and didn't use glossy varnish. I've seen this way on Panzermeister 36. First I put sole on the surface of the model, then I put the decals and I added sole again. With good stickers this idea works and they look really cool. They are not silvering and will look perfect after weathering. Fire extinguisher stickers are the icing on the cake. They are really cool and worth adding to your cart when shopping. And it's ready. That's actually all I wanted to show in this episode. I know it was quite long, but I hope I showed everything I did on the model. I am very happy with the effect and so far everything is going according to plan. Thank you for watching and I hope you had a good time. In the next one I will be painting winter camos, so click subscription button right now to get information about the publication. It's supposed to be very, very interesting. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!